Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable for Fort McMurray Cold Lake has uh, six minutes remaining in the debate. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It is an honour to come in here and finish my speech from earlier today. Um, as, as has been described, effectively what's happened after nine years of this NDP little government, they've completely lost the plot. There has been scandal after scandal after scandal, and the Auditor General of Canada has continually found that there have been all kinds of misgivings in terms of spending and any kind of compliance. In fact, the Sustainable Development Technology Canada, SDTC, turned into a slush fund for Liberal insiders. Um, and we've, we've been hearing from a variety of different whistleblowers of just how bad this is. In fact, one, one SDTC whistleblower said, and I quote, just as I was always confident that the Auditor General would confirm the financial mismanagement in SDTC, I remain equally confident that the RCMP will substantiate the criminal activities that occurred within the organization. Another whistleblower, and I quote, the true failure of this situation stands at the feet of our current government, whose decision to protect wrongdoers and cover up the findings over the last 12 months is a serious indictment of how our democratic systems and institutions are being corrupted by political interference. It should never have taken two years for the issues to reach this point, and what should have been a straightforward process turned into a bureaucratic nightmare that allowed SDTC to continue wasting millions of dollars and abusing countless employees over the last here. These are exceptionally troubling, and this isn't the first time this Parliament has had to have conversations that are very serious in nature over this government trying to cover up scandal. And one of the, one of the parts that I actually am quite frustrated with when it comes to um, this particular piece is the number of conflicts of interest where it was Liberal insiders that were getting money. And in fact, the, the Minister of Environment, who prior to joining Cabinet, served as a strategic advisor for a venture capital firm called Cycle Capital from 2009 to 2018. So it wasn't a short period of time that he was a strategic advisor. This same uh, person, who is now the Minister of Environment, the person that the Prime Minister has entrusted to handle Parks Canada, which we've seen a, being an absolute failure um, in terms of what's happened in Jasper, where they were either completely incompetent or negligent. Um, and let 30% of the homes in that community burn as a direct result of their mismanagement. But he still has shares in this capital, this cycle capital company, which is kind of interesting, and this exact company actually got money from this green slush fund. So it, it just continues showing the number of conflicts of interest, and this is where this becomes a serious problem. We have Canadians that are struggling to make ends meet. We have Canadians that are struggling to put food on their table. We're approaching Thanksgiving, and yet there are Canadians in Jasper. There are people in Jasper, 30% of the people in Jasper, their homes are gone. And this government, this NDP Liberal government, sat on their hands for the last nine years having forest mismanagement because they failed to accept that the pine beetle was a real threat. There are emails, there is co correspondence that went back and forth as to whether they should consider the political optics of prescribed burns. They completely neglected forest management. And then to add insult to injury, they turned away fire trucks, they turned away firefighters that were there ready, willing to help. They also, interestingly enough, decided to install fire hydrants in the town site of Jasper that actually weren't compatible with the majority of the fire trucks, actually the fire trucks that are in Alberta and British Columbia, which seems like a total miss because that basically means that you are very limited in the no amount of outside help you can actually even get. And that's because Parks Canada doesn't actually understand the Western Canadian perspective. But I digress here. And this is the problem, is that this government has completely lost the plot. They continue to funnel money into the Liberal insiders, giving them almost a blank check to mismanage Canadian funds, and yet put real people at risk day in, day out. And Madam Speaker, it is exceptionally clear that Canadians have had enough. Every 
single weekend when I go home to my riding of Fort McMurray Cold Lake, I hear from people that tell me, we just need an election. When are we going to have an election? We, we can't handle the pressure any longer of the mismanagement from this NDP Liberal government. Their waste, their corruption, their chaos. They see crime rising at an ever-increasing rate as a direct result of the catch and release bail policies this government pats themselves on the back for bringing forward. They, have, they are currently fighting this and, and, and preventing documents from going to the RCMP because they are afraid of what's in the documents. They make arguments that it, this is about charter rights, ignoring the fact that the Parliament of Canada has the right to have these. The Speaker has ruled very clearly that these documents were not to be redacted, and yet what we received was redacted documents. And so, Madam Speaker, it is very clear that this has to go to the RCMP. These, are, these documents have to go completely unredacted to the RCMP. Canadians deserve it. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader. Ma Madam Speaker, you know, it is beyond me how Conservative member after Conservative member can stand in their place and mislead Canadians on the reality of what it is that was happening on this issue. Number one, this is to be going to the Procedures and House Affairs Committee, and the Conservatives are filibustering, and they're using the excuse of, well, who cares if Stephen Harper never did it? We have a new position that we're applying to this particular government, and we're, even though it counters what the RCMP and what the National Auditor General are saying. And they are saying that this tactic that is used by the Conservatives with respect to the information being unredacted puts into jeopardy the issues, whether it's charter violations or others. Yet the Conservatives close their eyes, put their head in the sand, and ignore that. The question is, why do they ignore the RCMP and the Auditor General? The Honourable Member for Fort McMurray Cold Lake. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And it is actually quite lovely to be able to address my colleague from Winnipeg North. I hold in my hand. Um, Sorry, the Honourable Member can't reference. It's a document she may be wanting to speak about. So, the Honourable Member for Fort McMurray Cold Lake. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the member from Winnipeg North has can't help himself. He has gotten up to speak at every single possible opportunity he has had on this bill, filibustering it to the tune of, as of last night, uh, 10,151 words, which is over an hour of speaking time. If he had no problem with this, he would simply stop speaking and allow the documents to go unredacted. But they have something to hide. That is precisely why the member from Winnipeg North continues to get up on his feet, filibuster, preventing Canadians from getting to the bottom and getting to the truth. We are simply asking for them, the government, to allow these documents to go to the RCMP. If they have nothing to hide, why do they continue getting on his feet and talking about this bill? Questions and comments? L'Honorable Deputy de Tarbonne. The Honourable Member for Talbon, I'd like to thank my colleague for her speech. With this whole SDTC saga, what really strikes me is that this government is justifying itself based on very lofty principles. But really, all that's being asked for here is for documents to be produced because Parliament has the right to ask the government for documents, and it's the government's duty to provide them. What does my colleague think? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. It's rare that I agree with the Bloc Québécois about something, but this is an area where we completely agree because she's right. The House of Commons has the right to ask for documents. The Speaker himself produced a ruling asking for those documents. And that's why we're now debating a matter of privilege. That's fairly unusual overall in this parliament. And yet, with nine years of this NDP liberal government, we more and more frequently have questions of privilege and conflicts of interest, simply because this liberal government doesn't want to tell Canadians the truth. 
the RCMP needs to be able to carry out a an exhaustive inquiry. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for their uh, comments. And, you know, certainly I don't think anybody uh, uh, d- disagrees that, you know, the Liberals need to produce the documents. What I find bizarre, though, is the, the Conservatives have filibustered any sort of movement in the House by, by filibustering their own motion. You know what they're filibustering? A bill that uh, the survivor circle is trying to put on uh, record to, to a bill they're trying to table to ban forced sterilization of Indigenous women. Uh, the only thing that's blocking the tabling of this bill, a bill that apparently the Conservatives have said they support, is the Conservatives blocking their own motion. What does that mean? It means Indigenous women are still at risk of, ha- of experiencing forced sterilization in this country. Why? Because the Conservatives use this place as a game. When lives are on the line, when there are serious matters that we need to deal with. So I'm, I, my question is, why does, is the member actively participating through you, Madam Speaker, in blocking their own motion? Thank you. The Honourable Member of Fort McMurray at Cold Lake. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The wonderful people of Fort McMurray Cold Lake elected me to bring their voice to Parliament. They elected me to stand up for what is right and to stand up against corruption, against chaos, against all of the challenges we are seeing that have happened after nine years of this NDP Liberal government. The only person that is in here filibustering on this bill is the member from Winnipeg North who, as I said earlier, has spoke as of last night, over 10,000 words on this piece alone, over an hour, because he cannot help himself. He is so concerned about having these documents go unredacted to the RCMP that he gets up on his feet at every single opportunity. So, Madam Speaker, if the NDP have a problem, perhaps they should talk to the person from Winnipeg North. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Peace River Westlock. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank my Honourable Colleague for her great speech on this. Uh, one of the things that we continue to hear from the Liberals is around the charter rights. Now, I, I would love to, I didn't hear anything in the speech uh, around the charter rights uh, that the Liberals have been talking about. So I was wondering if the member could just mention a little bit about that. My understanding of the charter is the charter protects individual Canadians from overreaches of the government. Uh, it doesn't protect the government uh, from having to disclose documents. They also talk about uh, the, the police having to do their uh, having their own independence but madam chair my understanding is that if you see a crime or if you're concerned that somebody has stolen from you uh, you call the police and you provide them with the evidence that you think proves your case uh, in this case we are asking for the for the documents so the house of commons can pass that in, that that information over to the rcmp uh, what is the member's comments about this thank you madam chair the honorable member for fort mcrary cold lake uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I, I find it truly bizarre that the government, um, ha- who has changed their, their tune as to why they can't release these documents unredacted, to be perfectly honest. And, and they did release some of the documents. They just redacted. They used a big black marker to cross out wide swaths of information because they don't want it to be seen. Um, but the interesting piece here is they're ne- now the most recent argument as to why these documents can't be released is supposedly charter rights. But they're failing to accept the privilege of Parliament and where we're at. The Speaker, yourself, you have made a ruling on this. You have ruled in a case of privilege, something that is exceptionally rare, or at least it was prior to the last nine years of this Liberal government, who thinks that their job is to decide what Canadians do and don't get to see and what is best for Canadians. And frankly, I'm going to stand up for Canadians each and every day because they deserve better than this. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, um, Oak, uh, from Aurora, or, or Oak... Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. There we go. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. (laughs) And um, I just want to ask, the the ruling from the Speaker was that these documents were going to go to PROC. I'm wondering why you're saying the ruling was for them to go to the RCMP. Through you. Questions and comments through the Chair. To my colleague across the way. It was clear the ruling was that these documents were going to PROC. We are in agreement with that. 
the ruling is clear. I am wondering why the member opposite is filibustering their party and refusing to let these documents go to prop where this question can be studied. Because these documents are not only government documents, they are signed with another party. It is that party that is protected by the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And we have heard from the RCMP, we have heard from the um, Auditor General, that they are uncomfortable with this precedent. So could you please tell me why you're not doing what the order said, which was that these should go to PROC? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, again, that's uh, I'm not addressing it through to the Speaker directly, or, or should I say to address it through the Speaker, but not directly to the member. The Honourable for Fort McRary Cool Lake has one minute to respond. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And it's, it's actually quite wonderful. I think this is one of the first questions I've had that isn't from the member from Winnipeg North, and perhaps this is the first time any of... Uh, my colleagues have actually received a question that's not from the member from Winnipeg North on this. Um, and, and this is one of the big challenges we, we face. The Liberals are so afraid of the truth that they refuse to allow these documents to go unredacted to the RCMP. If, if, if they had a space where they, they weren't concerned, they would turn over these documents to the RCMP because, frankly, if wrongdoing happened, the RCMP deserved to have that information. If there is no wrongdoing, then there is no risk in sending it to the RCMP. So the fact that they're continuing to fight on this really should tell all Canadians about the level of corruption in this government when it comes to this green slush fund and just about every activity they do. Resuming debate. The